in this video, I'm going to explain how an adaptive filter called LMS filter or least mean squares filter can be used for adaptive system identification of simple two gene regulatory network. This is based on my previously published paper titled Adaptive Models for Gene Networks. So if you are interested in reading this article, please check the link shown in the video description. Let us assume that we perform live single cell experiment. So we have a cell here and using, for example, fluorescent reporter technology, we can measure dynamically changing concentration of say protein X and also protein Y. And if you plot the results, so we have time here, we might be measuring like every one minute. So we have a discrete time index I and this is concentration. X protein might be something like this. We have Y protein, which is something like this. X activates Y. So X gene activates Y gene. We have a very simple model, which is Y of I is A sub 1 times X I minus 1 plus B sub 1 times Y I sub 1. If we know these values, which are what we have here, right? The, all these measurement data, given these measurement data, can we come up with good values for A sub 1 and B sub 1? In other words, can we estimate A1 and B1 given the measurement data? So this is system identification problem. Now we have this equation. I want to make some changes to these parameters. So this is fixed parameter or constant parameter. That means this model is fixed model. Now, I want to have another type of model, time varying model. We have A1 of i times x of y minus 1 plus b sub 1 i times y of y minus 1. So now we have time varying parameter. This is also time varying parameter. It's no longer fixed. It's not a constant. This AI value changes over time and it is time dependent value. So this model is time varying model. Our model changes constantly over time because the parameter values change over time. Let us assume that we are at time i minus 1. And you may say this is our current time. If you look at this equation here, at this time i minus 1, this value is available because this is X protein concentration at I minus 1 and this value is available. At time I minus 1, these two values are available. Let us assume that we estimate these parameters A of I hat and B of I hat. This symbol hat indicates that these are estimated values. At time I minus 1, these values are available. X of I minus 1 plus Y of I minus 1. And at this time, if you know these values, and if you can guess or estimate these values, actually you can compute future Y value, which is Y of I. Since this is also estimated value, because we are getting this value using estimated premium values. We also want to put this hat sign here indicating that this is also estimated uh, future Y protein concentration. And let me explain using a diagram how this can be linked to, to the LMS adaptive filter. So we have a system here and this system is simple to gene regulatory network X activates Y. And we also have mathematical model here. And in this case, this is our model. At time i minus 1, what do we have? We have this data and this data. So we have x of i minus 1 and also y of i minus 1 available. And also we have these two parameters available at time i minus 1. So we have a of i hat and b of i hat also available. Now, once we have these four values or these four values, you can compute y of y hat. So using this model, we can compute this value y of i hat. 
Now, let's move forward in time. And now, i is current time. So previously, i minus 1 was current time. But now, it is i, which is the current time. Because the time is i now, we have this new data, y protein concentration at time i. Now, you can compare these two and find the error or the difference. And you provide the error to adaptive filter, which is LMS in this case. And this LMS will update these Permier values. We will have new estimated Permier values, A of I plus 1 hat and B of I plus 1 hat. Note that we are at time I now. And basically, we are predicting or estimating future parameter values. And because we have these parameters, and we have this data available, which is y of i. And because we are at time i, x of i is also available. Using these four values, we can compute the next y value, which is y of i plus 1. If we move our time forward once more, the time becomes i plus 1. Then from the real system, y of i plus 1 will be available. And again, you find the difference between this value and this value and find the error. Provide that value to adaptive filter. And adaptive filter will also update the premier values and so on. This iterative update process will continue and repeat over and over.